Hi guys. How you doing? My name is Taz. Um, I think most of your mics are sort of innately turned off. Um, I can, if you want me to at any point, uh, turn yours on. If you want to ask a question or whatever, feel free to just write it in the, in the, in the box and I will just sort of request to unmute you and we can talk and stuff. I really don't mind people asking questions. Um, quickly just on me i hate doing this bit but just for context um my name is taz i'm a, I'm a playwright and a screenwriter um i've been writing for five years now and um my first piece of work uh was a play that got programmed um at a venue in London and then uh, got nominated for an Olivier, which is basically the equivalent of a Tony Award uh, for Brits. And then now I work across different production companies developing uh, feature films and TV projects. And Blake and I are working on different forms of um, workshops and, and, and sort of uh, programs to try and to help make really simplistic knowledge accessible to people. And the one that we are going to be talking about on this workshop is more about the development stages of a script. And once you've already sort of learned the basics of writing, I really don't think you need to take a three year course to learn how to write. But you know, once you do know the, the basic tools that you need to have at hand in order to, to, to successfully write a piece, then the next stages of it can almost be more complicated than the actual writing of a good piece. Uh, so that's pretty much where I'm going to be covering today. Um, and with that, the, the first thing that I usually tend to talk about is that the best way to develop your sort of craft as a writer, but also your career as a writer is to write, a lot of different things at the same time. I know there's maybe a lot of different schools of thought that that gear you more towards like focusing on one thing. But the thing is with this line of work that one thing usually isn't sort of enough. So for, for, for many reasons, even though there may be some sort of like famous cases where either they did have one thing, which is very, very rare, or you just think they had one thing, but actually they had quite a few. So a really good example of this is uh, the director of Moonlight. He, uh, writer and director of Moonlight, he had written and, uh, and directed a lot of short films, but like countless. I mean, you can check him up on, 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 um, on IMDb. And he had done so many before, before Moonlight, but Moonlight was just the one that everybody heard about. The other really good example is like Rocky, the famous one, um, Sylvester Stallone. He had written a script before that. And then even when sort of Rocky got into the hands of uh, Erwin Winkler and his other producer, who I forget the name of now, there was a lengthy development process to that. It wasn't just sort of like, here's a great script and take it and make a really good film out of it. There is a long process to all of these films that end up being successful. It goes, it's the same for plays. It's the same for short films even. It's the same for uh, TV pilots. There's a very long process to it. And the best way to tackle that process is by having various at the same time on the go. Agents as well are another thing where if you sort of submit one piece of work to an agent, sometimes they'll take you on, but more often than not, like they will go, if they like it, they'll go, hey, I really like this one. What else have you got? What other things of your work can I read? That's what happens more often than not. And if you don't have others, it, it sort of, it doesn't really back up the idea of you being a career writer. In order to be a career writer, you need to write a lot. And uh, even if some of you, those of you that are sort of looking to do it more as a hobby, then that's, that's fine. You can sort of focus on your one thing and, and that's great. But I, I'm, I'm assuming most of you that have joined the workshop that is entitled how to sort of develop a sellable script. Sellable implies some form of career. Uh, very few people that aren't career writers or at least want to be career writers sell scripts. And uh, within the having lots of different projects on the go at the same time, there's something that I always advise, which is like having different tiers of projects. So you have 
basically a project on different levels, which feeds onto the next one. So you'll have, I always advise to have like one project, which is like a short film or like a web series or a, a series of sketches, uh, even a really low budget feature film you have, if you have a really cool concept for it, um, a play, whatever that is, something that you can make on your own, that you don't need uh, a producer for, you don't need a production company for, you don't need anyone for, you can just get it done with yourself, some friends to help you and the locations and props that you have at your disposal. Uh, maybe you have to buy some or you have to find some new people, but, but not out of your immediate circle of what is possible for you. A project that you can do at that scale. Then you have a sort of mid-tier project, which is the project that you are going to get made once you've gotten people's interest, i.e. it's the project you need a producer for, it's the project you need a channel for, it's the project you need a big theater for, uh, whatever that is, that's your mid-tier project. And then you have your sort of like high tier project, which is your sort of like dream. What would I do if I could do anything project? You have either one in each three of those categories or various in each three of those categories. And the way that works and feed in, feeds into each other is that by having a project that you can do for nothing or next to nothing with just the things and tools that you have at your disposal and people you have at your disposal, once you make that and it becomes a success, but by success, it doesn't mean it needs to win an Oscar. By success doesn't mean it needs to have 3 million views. Success can simply mean that it got into a decent festival. It got into a, like you made a short film and it got into a decent film festival. And that is, that sometimes can be enough. That can be enough to then message an agent and go, hey, Mr. Mrs. Agent, I have this short film that got into this festival and would you like to watch it? More often than not, if they recognize the name of the festival, they'll watch it. That's a foot in the door. Uh, success can mean you put it on at a really small off Broadway, off West End, off wherever it is theater that you have in your hometown. And a couple of reviews came from the local paper and gave you some really good reviews. That's, that can be success because all of a sudden you, again, you have something that you can take to producers, uh, agents, um, artistic directors and go, hey, this is something I have to show for my last piece of work. I would appreciate it if you'd look at my next piece of work, which requires more of a team behind it. You are proving that you're worth their time by doing it yourself first. And it's really important to do that because everybody's busy. Everybody has a lot of things to do. And in order for them to go, okay, I'm gonna invest, I'm gonna invest whatever little free time or spare time I have into this person, you really need to prove that you're worth that. You're not just a hopeful. You're not just a, a someone who's wishing or someone who's just fame chasing. You're somebody who's really interested in the act of storytelling and is willing to put the work in in order to get that done. People will respect that. Um, the next sort of thing on the uh, agenda, for lack of a better word to talk about, is the importance of being methodical whilst developing those projects and developing your own writing system, like your own your own path or your own map that takes you from A to B to Z. You can do courses for it. You can do workshops for it. You can read books. Um, there's a ton of different ways that you can sort of develop that system, but it is, Im it is imperative that you do develop it because it's the difference between you just sort of winging it every time and just going, oh, I'm just going to see what happens or I'm going to just, I, I kind of have an idea. Let me just go with it. Uh, that, that might work sometimes. Uh, and there definitely is a level of like, fuck it, let's just go. That is useful. But there is also, there is also a big level of um, importance to having a system, knowing when you have an idea or when you have a series of ideas, what is your gauge to choose which one you're going to work on first? Uh, once you know which one you're going to work on, how do you go about shaping it? How do you figure out the tone? Do you do characters first or do you do structure first? What even is structure? Like you, you, you definitely need to just have a base level 
knowledge and systematic approach in order to go forward with anything. Um, and then like the, the importance of, of, of sort of developing your own um, consistent practice is, is also imperative is that once you've developed these things or, or, or are in the process of developing these things, you really do need to set, set aside time every day to write. And I know people have probably said that to you guys already um, at some point, but I just want to repeat it. It is like going to the gym. Writing is like going to the gym. The more you go, the better you, the stronger you get or the faster you get. It's, it, it's really that simple. If anybody sort of goes, oh, I try to write, I was on a workshop earlier where one of the people on it um, said, I mean, which is fair enough. It's completely fair enough. But I just want to, for the purposes of this, use it as an example. I said, they tried to write um, a piece of dialogue and it was, they were struggling with the piece of dialogue and it felt really uncomfortable. So they just stopped and they didn't, they didn't write the piece of dialogue. That to me is, well, there's no, what that, that's the whole point. You, you have to be methodical and sit yourself down and force yourself to write every now and then. Cause if not, if you just stop every time you feel a little bit uncomfortable, then you never, that's not a methodical thing. Like, it, it should be like work. Everybody, for the most part, has to go to work every day or has to go to work most days or has to go to work whenever they have to go to work, but they have to do that. Whether they feel like it or not, they go to work. Uh, everybody needs to brush their teeth. Everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs to drink water. If you set it up so that you have to do it, eventually you'll get past that uncomfortable bit. Um, Judd Apatow has a, has a, has a, great quote or great thing that he said in an interview once where he just he would sit down for working hours in a day and just write jokes because that's his job his job his job is to be funny so he would just write jokes and write and write and write for nine to five and probably most of it would be shit but some of it he would keep and that's the important bit that's what you guys need to do i always say draw circles and what i mean what i mean by draw circles is that I set myself a, uh, I set like I writing is my job. So I do come to it every day, but, um, whenever I don't know what the fuck I'm doing on a given day, as in like, I can't get past this block I have, I still come to the table and I have my pen and I have a notepad and I just, I just draw circles. And by doing that, I am sort of keeping my fingers busy while I just think about how the fuck I'm going to get through this block. And it also, it means that I have a, cause it's it, what you, what you don't want to do is when you have a block, just avoid coming to the desk, avoid coming to the table, because then you, you sort of procrastinate and don't think about the issue. But by coming here and forcing myself to just draw circles, I am setting time aside to think about the block I have at hand and I guarantee you enough time sort of sat down thinking about it, actively thinking about it, you'll get through that block. Um, it's not, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, go for a walk, go for a run, go play some basketball, whatever, you know, tickles your fancy. If you feel in a block just to get out of your head, that's useful as well. But you always need to return to the desk, return to the page. Because if not, you're just procrastinating and you'll never really get through it. Um, the next thing that I use, well, wait, before I go on, um, does anybody just want to, does anybody have a question? Does anybody have something they want to ask? Um, there's no such thing as a stupid question. You can just write it in the chat or, uh, or, or yeah, probably write it, write it in the chat because I can't see most of you guys. Um, I'm going to plow on if not, but if I see anything in the chat, I'll answer it. Um, okay, so the next one is in terms of like industry, when you have a first draft of something, what is expected? Uh, the answer to this depends, right? If your first draft of something is something that you're considering to send to channels and you're considering to send to agents and production companies, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that that's an incorrect assumption to make is that you should never be sending your first draft of anything to anyone who can make a decision in your life, i.e. Again, production companies, channels, etc. Those 
people should only be contacted once you feel like you have a, a, a product, not a draft of a product. Your first draft should make a, this is what your first draft should do. Your first draft should make a solid attempt at giving clear characters, at having clear voices, at having a story, i.e. characters that are trying to do something and come up against obstacles on the way to doing that. It should have a cool, uh, it should have a, a, a an original um, feel to it. it I, I always, my, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people go, oh, I want to do a play like that play, or I want to do a film like, kind of like that film or a TV series, like kind of like that. That's already been done. And this isn't just like a purist thing where I'm just sitting here going, you should all be original. This is just gen like, if you've seen that thing that you want to make something like, so has the commissioner. Never think they haven't because it's their job. <laughs> Every, every agent and manager and production company person and channel out there has seen 99% of the shit that exists. Even if it's just the pilot, they might not have seen like every episode of everything that's out there or every film or everything that's out there, but they've seen most and pilots and they, 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 they've never assumed they haven't seen it. And by you trying to write something like that, you're uh, you're shooting yourself in the foot there's no point <laughs> because they've already seen it they want to see and this is invariable with every single um production company uh development exec that i speak to or every single agent every single manager they want to see something original that's all they want to see they want to see something which makes them go huh that's it that's all they're looking for they're just looking for that huh moment where they go ah i haven't seen people from this community before or this or, or i haven't seen people from this community act in this way before or i i didn't know this thing existed or these characters are super interesting or this story is told in a way that i haven't seen it told before from a perspective that i haven't seen it told before this is a world i haven't seen before all those things are the, what they're looking for they're not looking for something like that because that's already done if that, if that um, makes sense. Um, and with your first draft, that's what you're, you're trying to do is to give a clear sense of these things that are original, whether that be the world, the characters, the perspective, whatever that is. And then the way to develop that draft is by doing read-throughs with your, with your peers. Um, I speak about this, I speak more about this on, on workshops and how that sort of run those different uh, read-throughs and, and make them sort of successful and, and the most useful to you. But it is really that simple is you, you get it up on its feet, you hear it out loud, you check if all the rhythms work, if the tone works, if the, uh, if the characters uh, work, if, if it was predictable or not predictable or, or, or uh, clear or not clear. There's a ton of things that you can find out from a read-through if you just know how to ask the right questions. Um, and then lastly, the sort of last thing that I usually speak about is what materials you're all expected to deliver for a TV show versus a feature film versus plays. And it depends, but usually I'll give you like industry standards, right? For a TV show, you want to deliver, never sort of go ahead and write the whole series, don't get stressed out about writing the whole series. Um, you really don't need to. They're only ever going to read a pilot, which is the first episode. They um, are never going to read more than that. So you shouldn't write more than that. They will ask you where you think the, seri the series is going based on the pilot. And then you should have an idea of what's going to happen for the series and have a series Bible potentially where you sort of detail a little bit, like a little paragraph of what's going to happen in each episode for the rest of the season. Um, but that's it. You don't need more than that. Because as well, also consider, you know, going back to a conversation about drafts. No matter how, you should definitely sort of work it past the first draft and, you know, have as many drafts as possible before you send it on uh, when you think it's ready. But even at that point, even at the point where you think it's ready, no matter how ready it actually is, there's going to be notes. You just can't, you just need to make your peace with that. There's going to be notes, there's going to be changes. There's going to be characters that get cut. There's going to be jokes that get cut. There's going to be storylines that get cut. All that's going to happen. 
with a TV show, especially because you have to think down the line, if you go ahead and write eight episodes, but then they cut one of the, one of the, they cut the main character's brother from the pilot. They go, yeah, we just don't want the brother in the series. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> the rest of your eight episodes that all include the brother are obsolete now. They no longer worth anything. So that's one of the reasons why. Or, or the, all of a sudden they make your male character a female or they make your female character a male. All the shit you've written is now irrelevant. So don't do that. Treatments is something that you would want to have mainly for a TV. You, you'd, you'd want to have them for a film as well, uh, film and TV, but m- more so even for a, for a TV show is you really want to sort of put that together in a visual package where you have like a bit of a mood board going, where you have visual references for what you think the show should look like. Um, maybe even tonal references, like different projects that represent the tone of the piece. Um, um, a log line, which is just like a one phrase or two phrase description of what your show is. A synopsis, which is a slightly more longer form description, maybe a, a paragraph or two. Um, and it just put together in a nice, neat visual package for them to read, including your series Bible, which I spoke about a second ago. Um, for a feature film, same thing, just without the series Bible. And for plays, all you need is the play. That's, that's all you'd be expected to deliver is a play. Plays definitely need uh, more drafting than the others do uh, for submission because for plays, you, you rarely sort of have a team of... Uh, Theatre is naked. This is the best way I can describe it. Theatre is naked. All you have is the written word. There is no camera tricks. There is no, there's, there's nothing. It's the purest form of storytelling. And because of it, you can hide behind a lot less tricks. It's really just about, is your dialogue good? Is your story good? Are your characters good? That's it. And because that's all you got and you're not relying that much on big set pieces or big concepts, then you really want to draft that to make sure that those three things are on point. Is your dialogue great? Are your characters great? Is the story great? And by great, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean it's extravagant. It doesn't mean, you know, um, large. Great just means specific. That's all great means. Is it specific? Is it nuanced? Is it idiosyncratic? Those things are what great means. Those things are what interesting means. Does it mean something to you? Does the play, does the film, does the TV show mean something to you? More so than just, it was a cool idea because also people can see through that unless you really, really flesh out that cool idea. Um, In terms of getting an agent and all that kind of stuff, that's also something I could speak about if if anybody wants to hear more about it. Um, Those are, I am pretty much on time. Um, those are pretty much like the main points that I wanted to cover. And then I just always leave time for people who, if you have questions or anything like that, um, feel free to ask no such thing as a stupid question. It always takes people like two minutes to ask a question. Um, anybody want to, do you write alone? Um, do you mean, do you mean do I write alone as in like, do I have my own space to write or do I write alone as do I have a co-writer? Sometimes I've had co-writers. Sometimes I, most of the time I don't have co-writers. Sometimes I have had co-writers. Here's the thing to consider with co-writers. As soon as you co-write, you both own it. As soon as the word co-write comes onto that script, you both own the fucking script. And that's great in some ways and really bad in others. Money is the obvious one. Everything gets split down the the middle, which isn't a problem because it's way better to have 50% of something great than 100% of something bad. So if your co-writer makes you great, then by all means, I'd, I'd definitely take that deal. The problem comes when one of you starts to care way more about the project than the other one. And the other one starts to just lag or the other one starts to 
like not answer your calls. Um, uh, and then you're stuck there with a three quart done project that you can't do anything with without this person's consent who doesn't give a fuck about it anymore. And if you spent, especially if you spent months on it, like I had that happen to me once and never again, I had spent a, almost a whole year on it really early in my career. Um, and this person just trailed off, just didn't give a fuck about it anymore at one point. And then I was stuck with something that I'd worked on for a year that I couldn't do anything with. Uh, I do have a co-writer on one of the projects that I'm working on now uh, for a production company, but we're both, he's a career writer as well. And we've known each other for a while. He's also a producer. So I know that he has a vested interest in the project. He also makes his living doing this, which is very different. So when your food depends on it, people tend to not trail off and people tend to really care. And that's his case. And that's my case. So with him, it works really well. If that answers your question. Any other questions? Who do you work with to refine a concept or to float? Who do you work with to refine a concept or to float the feasibility of an idea? That's a good question. Uh, I have a bunch of people that I do it with my girlfriend. Sometimes I'll bounce something in terms of feasibility of a concept. I'll bounce it off my girlfriend. I'll bounce it off my, uh, agent. I'll bounce it off my manager. I'll bounce it off my publicist. I'll bounce it off my co-producer. I'll bounce it off another writer. Just anybody who's in my vicinity, whose opinion I trust and who I know understands the kind of work I want to do. Um, in terms of who do I refine a concept with I have my people like I have I have like my levels of people so my my really immediate circle which is my co-producer who I trust with everything uh, I have my girlfriend I have my a couple of close friends of mine that I work with in some capacity not as a writer but um, we sort of do other things together and whose opinion I trust and then other writers uh, it's maybe like a group of five people. And as soon as I have a script, first draft, I call them, we get together on Zoom or in person, we'll read it. I'll get them to give me notes. And then I'll do another draft, read it again. And then at that point, I will send it to one of like my team. So like manager agents, uh, et cetera. Um, and get them to read. And then once they've read it and okayed it, if they okay it, uh, then I send it, then they send it to uh, production companies, um, producers and all that. Any other questions? Any advice on developing a process method that works for you? Yep. And the, uh, it's, a, it's a long, it's a, it's a lengthy process to develop your process, but it's a definitely a worthwhile one. And the best way is genuinely to expose yourself to as many um, teachings as possible. So read a book. I mean, I always hated the books, man. I'm going to be honest. I always really fucking hated the books. The books do work for some people. So uh, if you're a person who you know is able to learn well from reading about structure books, then by all means do it. If not, then maybe don't waste your time with the books. Um, Audible, I there's there's some good like sort of writing books on Audible. There's one on playwriting, there's one on screenwriting. Um, workshops like this, but I mean, obviously we don't we don't have much time today, so there's only so much we can go into uh, certain things like structure and stuff like that. But definitely like take workshops, do uh, do individual workshops, do longer term workshops, uh, join Facebook groups and ask questions. Um, to get get sort of get involved with your local community if there's like a playwriting group that you can go to where you can share work uh the main one for 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 me personally was workshops and finding mentors those are the two ones and usually they they sort of they all come hand in hand like you sort of you do some workshops and then you maybe meet some people through those workshops or the person running the workshop and you really get along and you stay in touch like that's uh, and then and then you sort of send them questions and then as a result of being friends with them 
you sort of then meet somebody else who ends up being your mentor and things just sort of trickle from there. Uh, but osmosis basically is expose yourself to people who know the stuff that you want to know. And by, by a mission, by osmosis, you will, we all will take that in. And then you just pick and choose your favorite things from all the people that you've learned from. I've done that. I don't sort of follow any one thing that anyone has taught me. I just sort of take my favorite bits and form my own thing. No worries. Uh, any other questions? Forgive me, I'm going to vape. It's not weed, by the way. It's just regular nicotine. You guys good? Nothing else? Going once. Do you offer any workshops? Yeah, there's um there's two different ones that we do on um at writing at writing workshops. Um the website through which you book this, there's two workshops that I run. There's one there's for people who haven't written before or have written very little before and they just want to learn like the basic necessary sort of things that you need to learn and know about in order to progress or, or, or at least be informed enough to embark on a writing journey. And then there's a different one, which is for people who already kind of understand the different elements of structure and tone and character development and, 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 um, and dialogue and formatting already understand those basic things. And, and now just want to like for a period of time, work on a script and work on really developing their craft uh, past a certain point. So those are the ones that we do on um, writing workshops, but I, I'd, I'd advise to take various, like I'd advise to sort of, if, if, um, if you wanted to do the ones that we do, by all means do them. Uh, but I, I would go find another website and do another one as well. And I'd, then I'd read a book maybe, or listen to an audible book. And then I'd, hopefully maybe stay in touch with one one or two of the people who run the workshops again and and ask questions work on stuff write stuff then go back to some more workshops like it's an ongoing thing email info for those do you have an email for more info on those workshops uh yeah absolutely i'll throw my email Taz. So if you shoot um, if you shoot me an email, uh, you can shoot me an email either about the workshops or if you just have any loose questions that you come up with um, after the call about anything you know writing wise, feel free to shoot me an email. No worries, dude. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? No such thing as a stupid question. No, you guys good. All right. Well, um, it's, it's been nice to talk at you. I'm very conscious that you haven't been able to talk with me. Uh, but genuinely, I mean, it. there's my email. It, it goes straight through to me. If you have any questions, anything that you want to ask, I'm always happy to sort of answer and, and try and help. I really want to get more people to write and more people to be involved in writing. So um, I love doing this. And uh, I wish you guys all good luck. And and I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a good rest of the day or night, depending wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for joining and uh, I'm going to head off, but uh, yeah, have a good day.